It's an ethical question investigative journalists and filmmakers often face. If you turn up evidence that sheds new light on an old crime, when and how do you bring it to the attention of authorities? Now, one HBO documentary series is under scrutiny for how it may have handled that decision. I did not kill my best friend. I did dismember him. With a subject like Robert Durst, there was little doubt the jinx would be compelling. Bob Durst has been accused of many crimes over many years. HBO's six-part documentary follows filmmaker Andrew Jarecki as he looks into how the one-time heir to a real estate fortune became a three-time murder suspect who somehow dodged justice. The guy whose wife disappeared, the guy whose best friend was murdered, the guy whose neighbor in Galveston was dismembered. And we hear from Durst himself, including a bombshell saved for the final episode, an apparent confession uttered by Durst after he thinks the interview is over. But there's another twist. Just before the final episode, police arrest Durst for one of those old murders. Durst is the subject of a cable documentary right now, which coincidentally wraps up tonight. Coincidence, really? Andrew Jarecki recorded Durst's apparent confession in 2012, leading to the natural question. So when did you all realize you had that recording, and when did you take it to the authorities? Jarecki says he wasn't aware of what he had until months later. As for when he shared it with police... They've had that audio for many months. So far, Jarecki is refusing to be more specific, but he resolutely denies colluding with police to time the arrest to the finale. Well, let me just say this. I don't believe in coincidences. I mean, this, this was timed to the finale. Now, whether the police were in on it, that seems a bit of a stretch. But they knew since the summer of 2012 that they had this. And, you know, apparently they... It took them a while to figure out exactly what he was saying, and they realized after the fact that they had something that he was still miked, but there's no coincidence here. And as for the timing of, you know, the, the, the arrest, I'm assuming that the police knew that the finale was coming, and they essentially timed it to it. I mean, I, it has to be that way. This is a really dicey ethical problem for sure. I mean, you compare this to serial <laughs> where it kind of unfolded yeah. week by week, but it was somebody who was already in prison for murder. So if there were new developments, it really, it wasn't a matter of life and death. This is really a matter of life and death. And, and for this to be coming out when it did, when it seems like there's at least a possibility that it was known for a long mm -hmm. time, you know, I mean, the, the story can't take precedence over real life. And in this case, it seems like there's a good chance that that's mm -hmm. what happened. And I'd, I'd like to have the definitive answer to that. I, I hope we get it. A couple of technical things as a former filmmaker. It is quite possible they did not know they had that information. You shoot six times the amount of, of material versus what's going to go in there. So that's somebody's job to go start, you know, uh, logging all the material. That could have sat there for a long time. And frankly, I could have just been chopped off at the end because it, the interview was over. So they're just fortunate that somebody said, wait a minute, wh what's he saying? In the bathroom. So yeah, I want to no. put that on the table. No, I'm possible, telling you. But I'm telling you. They've known for I, a long time. Now. I well, perhaps they did, but the, also the police, the L.A. police corroborated that they, he had given him the information earlier. So they didn't move on it immediately. Mm -hmm. That's to be questioned, but at least they did do that. And he said, the filmmaker, that's the police moving on their timetable. So I just want to put that on the table. It's still ethical issues all around it. Don't, don't get me wrong. But those two technical mm -hmm. things need to be understood as well. You know, yeah. I think a lot investigative journalists in, in lots of fields, in newspapers and lots of different media, take a long time to do their work. And I, I don't think that there is an absolute statement that journalists, as soon as they find a piece of evidence that might have a, a role in a, in a criminal investigation, okay. need to turn it over. I don't think that's a, that's a fair assumption. I think the bigger ethical question really with, with this show was the reordering of events to increase the, the drama in, in, in the show. The fact that it, they made it look as though an interview was able to be obtained because of pressure from an event that didn't happen until the year after the interview was actually done. That to me is, you know, a, a unfortunately somewhat familiar reordering of things to try and create drama. Yep. Um, I saw a lot of commentary this week that, that indicated that this was a, an evidence, piece of evidence that journalism and entertainment were now suddenly in, in flux. 
it's that's a really old I mean true crime is not a new genre it's not as if this is the first time anyone's been interested in it I, I do think there are some real questions and we're gonna have to wait for the investigation to, to finish to find out the answers well yeah and the symbiotic relationship between the press and the police is nothing new either what do you think a perp walk is it's the uh, the criminal justice system and the Giving press working uh, right. one hand washing the other uh, I, one point I want to make, it's not necessarily on the point of the media ethics here, but what does that little bit of audio really prove? Sure. Maybe he's sarcastically saying, oh, they're trying to get me to admit, yeah, oh, yeah, I killed them all, sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming he's got a good lawyer, and that's exactly the case and the and lawyer's going to make. one of the lines that goes throughout the, the show was that he's a guy who just likes to talk to himself and mumble uh. and, and say things. <laughs> like, I, I had the same re response that uh. it, it did All not right. seem definitive to so me. So I found even more problematic the New York Times' role in this. They had seen the entire documentary, the six-part series, in advance. They knew the end. When they knew there was an arrest imminent, they agreed to embargo their own story about releasing the fact that he was arrested because... The HBO documentary said, don't ruin the ending. Now, public editor Margaret Sullivan, who I think is terrific, she's the best public editor they've had, thought that that was okay. I really didn't. I, I don't think it's okay either. And you know, something else I ran across, somebody wrote that somebody was, was criticized, and the public is to blame too, mm -hmm. because somebody was uh, writing that, you know, they were appalled at people um, complaining about giving away the ending mm. and I said that hasn't really happened and I got on Google and started looking there were plenty of people mm -hmm. complaining about you know oh no now the ending's been given away already yeah. I mean come on people this is a murder we're talking about multiple murders multiple deaths there aren't spoiler life. alerts in real life <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah I would just say I have a problem with embargoes yep. generally too, as you know yeah. and now it get, it's getting ridiculous. It's ridiculous you'll be up at the state house the governor is going to appoint Dan Kennedy to be yeah. head of the health care connector <laughs> you know that's it, not it's true <laughs> it's, I'm not <laughs> sorry I make that up but it's embargoed till you know noon and everyone in the press corps has mm. written their tweet mm. And they're waiting for yeah. noon, everyone's yeah. trying to bam, everyone's Well, you sentence. know how I feel about that. Don't give me anything you don't want me to report, because I don't honor embargoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I, ha I think I would have to agree with you. And then it became a little bit more complicated, because one of their reporters was yes. frequently it, interviewed in the documentary. In the, and they said, the same well... Same one who wrote the story. Right, exactly. And they said, well, that's not unusual. And it isn't. Uh, but in this case, because of all the other stuff around it, you know, he perhaps didn't disclose. They, That's right. the point. And they also, is writing I think they want to go the ending. other way since yeah. because of his involvement. Right. But without yeah. compensation. Yes, yeah, no, 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 I, yeah, but, and that's an important point to make. Right. But I still think, given that, they probably messy. wanted to go the other way. They should have, yes. Yeah.